Hello everyone, I'm Daz, and this week's discussion is a word of encouragement about being kind to yourself. So much of the time, I talk about attacks leveraged against us. Today I want to talk about when you are your own tormentor or abuser. It's natural to feel sorry for yourself when something bad happens. Mourning and grief are totally natural. However, once you get past the grief cycle, when it's all you can do and you refuse to grow or learn from the pain, this is when it becomes a victim mentality. One reason you don't want to fall into this is because you get stuck in a mindset of defeat and therefore you can never advance. So it's a vicious cycle of more destructive patterns, outcomes, pain that never ends. Therefore, you will not thrive. I've been reading the book of Job. And the Most High has really been speaking to me about Job's journey. Job was tested with all kinds of ailments and he lost everything. However, he never turned away from God. But one thing Job did struggle with was his thought process and what he said as a result. Satan has a threefold ministry to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to curse, he wants you to curse God and yourself. If you do both, you'll have hell on earth. Therefore, he's robbed you of your blessings, of happiness, of your salvation, of eternal life. He's killed your happiness, peace, and joy. And then there's a second death, and he's destroyed your entire existence by cursing God and by cursing yourself. This world is designed to get you to curse yourself. After all, Satan is the prince and ruler of this earth. I've been reading the book, The Power of the Subconscious by Joseph Murphy, and while I might not agree with every aspect of the book because it does have some rather new age ideas, one thing that stands out is that your subconscious mind is active 24-7. It takes orders from your conscious brain that is always rationalizing, judging, thinking things through, making comparisons, your logical part of your brain. When you speak negatively about something or you think negatively about something, whether it's your health, not being able to do something, or whatever the case might be, you're giving a command to your subconscious mind to absorb that command and therefore it brings it into fruition. In Proverbs 23, 7, it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So we know that our thoughts form our reality. God showed us how powerful our thoughts were. The same with our words. So do not use words like I can't, I won't, don't, will not be able to, are unable to. You want to make sure that you keep your language positive. The only time you should be using these words is saying things that you absolutely want to be null and void. And I would go on to say, I believe the reason why we as humans have this ability to create and destroy with our words is because we are created in his image. And we know that God spoke the universe into existence. We live in a universe, one verse, one word, an utterance. The same goes for believing in something you're praying for. You must eliminate doubt and stay clear of people or anything that makes you question it. So as I've mentioned before, I've been going through a lot over these past few months, and there's some things that God purposed in my heart to pray and believe for. Some of it might sound almost crazy, but one thing God had me do, as I mentioned over a month ago, was start cutting out different influences in my life, be it pages, videos, entertainment, people in my life who were speaking against whatever it was he was telling me to believe for. And at first, I didn't understand why. I just knew he wanted me to hear his voice, but now I'm getting it more of a clear understanding that 
He also did that because they were actually speaking against what it is that he wants me to believe and bring into fruition. The Bible talks about having childlike faith. Why like a child? Because kids have a vast imagination. They aren't easily talked out of what they believe. They are repetitious in whatever it is they are after, and they are hungry and determined. I really like that about children. I also thought about how kids have such an open mind. They are constantly exploring. They seek out answers. As adults, we're we're taught to compartmentalize and to focus and narrow our scope. By narrowing our scope, it's not always bad because it keeps us focused. And I get sometimes we need to be specialized in a field. But by doing this, it can limit us in our ability to problem solve or to think outside the box. Or even when we need to have faith, we're so locked into a narrow tunnel vision view. We don't see that there's more to our life than what we've been experiencing Also, with being hungry, I went to a Bible study this past Saturday. I was invited by a new friend that I made, and it's funny how it all worked out, but we were talking about wisdom and the difference between the wisdom of the world and biblical wisdom, and the wisdom of the world isn't a bad thing. People have street smarts. They have, you know, their emotional intelligence, their ability to socialize versus more intellectual quotient, more ability to read, understand things, comprehend to those who are more book smart. So there's different forms of intelligence. And then with biblical knowledge, it it's something that can only come from God. It's something that is beyond our human understanding. It talks about how the things of God are foolishness to man. But what's funny is Man's ways and our ideals are so limited to what God's wisdom is. It's infinite. So sometimes when he gives us a promise or declaration, it may not make sense at the time, but remember, he's beyond time. A thousand years is as a day with the Lord. So we know that for him, what he might promise you five years down the line might feel far away, but it doesn't mean that it is not going to happen just because you don't see the makings of it. And so much of adulthood is about lacking hope. Hope. A lot of times we'll talk about adulting and adult problems and situations. But no matter what you suffered up to this moment, I want you to reframe your thinking and use scripture to back it up. Similar to what I said in the video about reprogramming your mind and your dream state, the same goes for when you're awake. And it's even more crucial when you're awake because you have more power to do this. Not only have faith and speak scripture, but envision what it is you're praying for and hoping for. So we know that faith can move mountains, faith the size of a mustard seed. So it's true we must have that faith, but even when we're believing for whatever it is we're believing for, we should use our imagination or creativity God gave us to envision whatever it is that he wants for us. So if it's a healing, envision that healing for yourself or whomever else you're praying for. If it's a financial breakthrough, then begin to see yourself receiving a new job, promotion, whatever the case might be. What's funny for me is I'm an author, I'm a novelist, I write fiction. And so for me, it's like I can envision entire worlds, characters, dialogue of things that don't exist in three to 500 pages and write about it in detail. But why is it so hard for me when it comes to my own faith on something that he promises me to narrow my scope and envision Or I should say, open up my mind to the possibility and see whatever it is that I'm believing for. Job prolonged his suffering when he said he was cursed the day he was born. He struggled with his faith, seeing a better future outcome. He talked about how when he laid down, he was restless because of the sores on his body and he tossed and he turned. It was very difficult for him because everything around him said death, despair. 
and having that kind of faith in those circumstances felt near impossible. We often do this. We stay anxious, depressed, hopeless, fearful, insecure, unconfident, unloved, abandoned, rejected, sick, broke, longer because all we learn to see and speak to our that's all we learn to see and speak to ourselves as. We allowed others to use auto suggestions. Basically, auto suggestions are is when someone speaks something over you, whether it's the media, through the news, a ad, a commercial. The laws of society, family, friends, coworkers, strangers, enemy, enemies, whoever. And we know that this is all, at the end of the day, a spiritual issue. It's a spiritual matter, as Ephesians 6.12 talks about with unclean spirits. So therefore, because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, pulling down the strongholds, a lot of what we have to overcome is through our faith. It's through the word of God. It's also through what we speak and what we think. You can't pray and believe for something like a breakthrough, but speak against it in the same breath. You can't say, Father, I'm praying for a new job, but in the next breath say, you know, I'm probably not going to get it anyways. Like you can't do things like that because you're nullifying what you just prayed for. You're not having faith. Faith, we have a seed and we need to water it with backing it up with hope, with imagining a positive outcome by maintaining hope. This takes discipline, practice. You can start by meditating on the word and familiarizing yourself with scriptures. You must also be on the defense when it comes to what you're believing for, no matter how great or small. You must be ready to break strongholds, negative schemas or thought patterns, life traps or generational curses, attachments that you formed from your youth, soul ties, trauma bonds with anyone who has ever harmed you emotionally in any kind of way, and truly believe whatever it is that's been holding you back is gone and can no longer inhibit you. You must learn to shut out anyone or anything. I don't care if it's a song, a movie, a television show, a commercial, a quote, online people you know, whatever works against your vision that you're having faith for, you need to avoid it. If something triggers you, I don't care if it seems innocent, ask yourself, why is this triggering me? What's the root of this? But if even after being honest with yourself, it still bothers you, I would stay away from it. Don't allow yourself to dwell on negative emotions like hatred, bitterness, jealousy, envy, pride, insecurity, being overly competitive with anyone else. Really, when it comes to being competitive, it's something that we have in our society. And sometimes we have to ask ourselves, what really does it benefit me to keep up with the Joneses or to be better at this or that than others? Cut off whatever it is. If it's a person, hang out with them less. If it's a website or app, delete it or disable your account or stop visiting it. If it's a show, song, news, movie, stop watching or tuning in or listening to it. Use the same time you might have spent with your old habits that help to water your doubt. Because basically, you got to look at faith and doubt as two seeds. There's a seed of faith and there's a seed of doubt. You water the seed of doubt with all the negative things you say, that others say, that you allow into your psyche. Jesus talked about the lamp of the body being thine eye. That's also talking about your mind as well. So if you're allowing negativity into it, you're watering the seeds of doubt. In the same way, you can be watering your seed of faith. So rather than, you know, talking to those people, surfing social media with whatever it was validating your doubt, Pray, meditate on the word in place of that. Take your time to do that. Your world is formed by your thoughts and words. Don't be a sponge or a tumbleweed that soaks up everything somebody tells you or gets blown around from one thing to another, never having control over your own life. It takes just as much energy to feel bad about yourself and dread your life than to make an effort to be kind to yourself, learn self-love, and have faith and work to change those areas that you're unhappy in. I don't care if science, research, logic, or patterns say so. You might not have been able to, as a child, defend yourself against the negative things spoken over you 
or to you, but you can now take back your life. This includes, and this is common with generational curses, if you came from a household where there was addiction or there was violence, say domestic violence, or there was rape or abuse. I know for me in particular, I've had some familial history of that. And, you know, when you go to a psychologist, they're going to tell you, you know, you have a higher higher likelihood if your parents had a domestic violence situation of either if you're a man being the perpetrator or if you're a woman being the victim. However, you know, there are women that abuse men as well. So I guess if your father was the victim, you as a male, they would probably say were more susceptible and whoever you're with, you might pick a controlling woman. However, that doesn't have to be that case. You can break that attachment style. You can break that bond. And it doesn't matter if you've fallen into patterns that people predicted. Now that you're aware of it, you can change that. One highly recommended thing to do is pray first thing when you wake up throughout the day, before you go to bed. When you first wake up and go to bed are so important because that is going to be what really makes your day and ends your day, and those two things are important. And then when you go to bed, it's in your subconscious. So even if you're having dreams with bad suggestions, you have something to defend yourself against. When it comes to praying throughout the day, you may not be able to get on your knees or bow your head at work, but even just in your mind, you know, whenever these thoughts come up or you're feeling tormented, just remember whatever it is, whatever scriptures you were led to and whatever positive affirmations you have to speak against it. Always speak of it in an opposite light. Eventually you will rewire your mind and attitude through this method. If you feel something doubtful about to slip from your lips, stop yourself and rephrase it. Remember that God's perfect love casts out all fear. His love is never ending or failing. Knowing this is good. You might not be able to stop the people at your job, school, wherever you go, or or whatever you watch or who you live with from saying terrible things to you or about themselves, but you yourself can be the architect of your own world when it comes to the life you're building through what you're saying and thinking. You can speak against it in your mind or sometimes verbally reverse it aloud depending on the situation. I admit there's been times where somebody told me something crazy and I said, nope, that's not the case. And I went back against them, not in an argumentative way, but just more in declaring it was not the case. I actually had a instance on Facebook where I woke up in the morning and I would have been having an awful night where I'd been harassed in my sleep. And this man did this reading I never asked for on one of my pictures. And he said all these crazy things about how my love life was going to be full of being unloved, taken for granted, cheated on, and my friends were all going to be jealous of me. And I was never going to have real friendships and all these crazy things. And you know what? I could have believed and received what that man said, but instead I backed up with scripture what God's promise was for me and I declared what he said null and void because that was not the case. Even if you have a dream or you have crazy things said to you, wake up and just completely declare it null and void. Also, pray for those who are spewing this venom. Chances are they are They are oppressed and miserable themselves. Be an example of your faith, what it means to walk with God, to believe in Jesus Christ, to be positive. This is so crucial. Part of us winning over souls to Christ is walking and leading by example. People take note of the life that you lead and how your life is turned around by your faith and positive thinking and speech. It will encourage those around you to live differently. Even if they resist and they put you down or they mock you, they may remember in their last breath. Because we are also planting seeds of faith in others' lives. Even if they have had people planting seeds of doubt and death and despair, be that one person who plants seeds of faith, of, of the gospel, of salvation. We are in the world, but not of it. We are a peculiar people. Yes, logic says 
being a realist says, but what does God say? If it does not edify or bring life, then speak, think, and believe against whatever it is. You are not a punching bag. You do not deserve to suffer or stay suffering. You are deserving of love, peace, joy, hope, faith, wealth, and life. You are a son or daughter of the King, the Most High. And with this all being said, the devil understands this. And as I mentioned earlier, this is why he makes war with us. I've come to the conclusion because I've done many videos on the occult, on the paranormal, on witchcraft, that magic itself isn't about necessarily the spells people create, the items they use, the potions, whatever it is. It's more about the faith of the practitioner and who they are working it against. So many become targets because they allow a magician to cause them to believe they are cursed. Even when I did the video, Sign Someone Hex You and How to End It, I had some saying, you know, as a Christian or believer, you can't be cursed. That is partially true. You shouldn't be able to, but there are doors we can open in our life that can allow this. Just like Satan can't just blatantly attack us. But what can happen is if someone is working magic against you, they can send unclean spirits to work on your mind to beat you down to the point where you tell yourself that you're broken or damaged and by beating down your gate and then causing you maybe to sin or be fearful and to be filled with hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness, whatever the case it, it might be, it allows them to burrow in and then try to take hold of whatever areas of your life they try to hex you for. So this is why it's so important that we're constantly, even on our worst days, speaking life speaking against any plans of the enemy so we don't leave any room for any kind of contamination. If you were to go to a fortune teller and believe them, a lot of people believe in psychics and people who are into divination, but a lot of it has to do with the person who goes to them and believes in them. A lot of times skeptics will go and say, see, nothing happened. Why? Because they don't put their faith in whoever this person is or they don't believe in it. However, someone who puts their faith in this person may end up with that result because that is what they believed in. And this is why propaganda and psychological warfare is used and why it's so dangerous. I believe 2020 became a tough year for many because they kept on reaffirming it through memes, media, videos. People kept confessing and believing it was a tough year. Now, let me ask you this. Was it a tough year for you personally or a tough year for the world? For those who believed it was a tough year for them as well with the world because they saw themselves as collectively a part of the world, they probably brought a lot of heartache and problems on themselves as well. Because it was a collective faith for negative outcome or manifestation, it made it worse. Chaos and fear thrived. And I challenge you, if you're afraid, I don't care that the calendar hasn't changed to 2020, 20, 2021. Imagine yourself in a peaceful place right now, healthy, devoid of chaos and fear. This is why sometimes you must close your eyes to what you see or hear and see what you want to see. See the promises God has for you instead, no matter if things look like they're, look like they aren't changing or getting worse. It's been proven even in tough situations where you take two types of people, one who's more of a realist or a cynic and one who's more of a visionary, someone who has a strong imagination. Sometimes those with a stronger imagination walk out surviving and those who are more realistic don't. I can tell you I'm someone who does often err, err on the side of being a little bit pessimistic and sometimes I can call it how I see it, but I'm learning that even if that's how I've been wired to think, I still need to have that faith override whatever it is that I see in front of me. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. If you are struggling with bad thoughts that hurt you, hold true to the promises that your life is meant to be peaceful. I would recommend saying my life is peaceful, prosperous, I am loved, healthy and whole in Jesus' name. The promise God has for me are manifested as according to Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Declare your victory in Jesus' name. 
Also, don't speak evil against others either or imagine against them. If you feel envy or anger, take it to God. Personally, I struggled with this when I was younger, especially under the age of 25. Being a naturally competitive person, sometimes I would find myself when I was at school feeling slightly competitive in a silent way because I'm an introvert. So I would not the kind of person who would go in front of someone and knock them down. But even online, it's very competitive. But then I begin to ask myself, why do I feel this way? Why do I feel this need to do this? Why do I only go to look up or look at this person to think negative things? And God actually got on me and warned me, stop that. Do not try to tear anyone down, not even in your mind. So I stopped doing that. And honestly, I can say I feel a lot healthier mentally after doing that and even closer to him because I feel like it's a natural thing to do, but it's so wrong. And, you know, I wouldn't want that done to me. Like, I wouldn't want, even if someone ever verbalized it to me, I wouldn't want someone to do that to me. So I think it's interesting, you know, with maturity too, what God can reveal to you and, you know, bring out. And don't be afraid to pray and believe for those who are unable to for themselves. God will honor your patience and perseverance in that. You know, if you have a family member, even if they're a believer or a friend or brother or sister in Christ or someone who's just not believing, I don't care if they're an agnostic or an atheist or even if they were a Satanist, you can still pray for them and you can still pray and have faith for them. So, I mentioned earlier that my inspiration came from a lot of things that have been happening to me lately. And I wrote up this video earlier today. I'm filming this on Tuesday the 15th. And I had a job interview that came up. And it was after I began confessing that I had a job because I'm between jobs because my job is project based. And sometimes I can go months without a project, which means I need to find something in between. And I was very stoked. I was like, yes, the faith I had, it came to pass. And then when I went to the interview, they're like, we're sorry because you're on call. We don't know if we can take you. And I felt like I got shot in the chest and I could feel all the negativity coming back to me. And I'm like, no, you have to lead by example. You have to remember the promises God has been giving you. You're in spiritual rehab. That's what I call the healing process I'm going through with God right now as I sort things out in my life and he gives me a clearer picture of my purpose. But I realize that. And sometimes when you're even trying to encourage others, you find yourself being attacked or discouraged like Job. Um, when Eliphaz, I think was his name. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. I don't have the Bible right in front of me right now. He told Job, you know, you were one that encouraged others. Now you're discouraged. So I'm just saying, you know, even in giving this message or hearing this message, don't be surprised, you know, if in, you know, really hyping up your faith that the enemy doesn't try to come attack you with fiery darts, but don't allow yourself to stay down, get back up. And I do want to end this in a prayer uh, just because of the importance of the message. Father, thank you for the opportunity to fellowship with whomever watches this video and whatever time or point in their life they are in. I pray for the viewer that you would make them whole mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Heal any broken areas of their life. Pray you would tear down any strongholds in their life, any soul ties, any generational curses, any trauma bonds, any unhealthy attachments, any unhealthy thought patterns or obsessive thoughts. Help them to realize their need for you if they are not saved. For those who are, please strengthen their faith and help them to speak and think things that would edify and help them to bring life and not destruction or chaos or evil to their own lives and the lives of others and to be kind to themselves and to be kind to others. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So I hope that you found this message encouraging and that you take it to heart. Feel free, as always, to share your thoughts, questions, concerns, comments. 
and thank you for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Take care and God bless.